a live webinar on 21 CFR Part 820, Quality System Regulation, Applying Principles of Lean Documents and Lean Configuration. My name is Les, and I'm going to be your host today. On behalf of the Global Compliance Panel team, I would like to thank you for being part of this event. Today's webinar will be presented by Jose Mora. Jose Mora is a principal consultant specializing in manufacturing, engineering, and quality systems. For over 29 years, he has worked in the medical device industry, specializing in manufacturing, process development, tooling, and quality systems. Prior to working full-time as a consulting partner for Edsari Consulting, Jose served as a director of manufacturing engineering at Boston Scientific and as a quality system manager at Stryker Orthopedics, where he introduced process performance, problem solving, and quality system methodologies. Jose worked for 10 years, so 10 years at Cardiff Corporation, now a Johnson & Johnson company, where he led the successful tooling, process development, and qualification of Cardiff's first PTA catheter. We are really honored to have such a distinguished person such as Jose with us to present this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, I would like to inform you of the program outline of this training session today. This webinar is for 60 minute duration. First, Jose will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the area that will be covered, and he would then share with you his presentation. I would also like to inform you that all participants, once they are part of this teleconference, they have been placed on mute and will remain so until the Q&A begins towards the end of this session. This is for the purpose of avoiding any kind of discontinuity and for allowing the presenter to speak clearly so that everyone present can take maximum benefit from this webinar. I also request all to hold back your questions until the Q&A window begins. Ten minutes of time will be allotted for the Q&A, during which your questions will be answered. And ladies and gentlemen, if for any reason you get logged out of this training session or teleconference, I request you all to follow the same procedure. Now that we are all ready to start the session, I request Jose to take it from here. Jose. Thank you, Liz, and thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. We're going to discuss a very important regulation that governs the design, manufacture, and distribution of medical devices, 21 CFR Part 820. But we're going to discuss it in the context of the principles of lean documents and lean configuration. Uh, first of all, a little bit about my companies. Um, one of my companies is Atsari Consulting, and we specialize in engaging medical device and pharmaceutical clients in providing solutions to them for manufacturing, engineering, and quality systems. The other company, Atsari Enterprises, focuses on the development of the lean configuration and lean documents co uh, concepts and deliverables. We're going to start with some thought-provoking images from everyday life. and. These images are things that we accept on a regular basis, yet for some reason when we walk into a medical device plant, we seem to leave some of these experiences at the door. And I'm going to encourage you this time to bring those into the plant. We're going to go over what I call the genesis of chaos that seems to apply anywhere where there are document systems around regulated industries, more specifically medical devices as well as pharmaceuticals, and how we arrived at that, that, that situation. The, the map of, of the genesis of chaos would be the web of cross-references, and we have created quite a tangled web, and I can say this now safely that almost any company has this issue. So. It's a very tangled web, and that's why so many have, have an interest in this particular issue. We're going to then arrive at the key principles of lean documents and present an alternative to that web of cross-references. So once we have set the, the background for the lean documents and lean configuration, we're then going to explore the various aspects of the quality system regulation. 
which is another name for 21 CFR Part 820. And we're going to see how in each section the elements of lien configuration can be applied. We're finally going to go through some lien um, dock and configuration example, design control example section, and then arrive at a conclusion. Okay, so let's let's proceed. So in in everyday life, there are some things that are very common to us. I, I'm just going to ask you to look at them from a slightly different perspective. Now, you walk into a restaurant and you are there for a purpose. You're there to enjoy a meal and the restaurant hands you a document. Now, that document has what I call a single purpose. The purpose is to help you to give you the information necessary to select your meal. Now, there are two elements to that purpose. So a function may have more than one element. One of the elements is it shows you the things, the options of what you can order. So that's one element. The other element, it shows you the price. So if you have a description of the item and the price, those two elements serve the function of helping you to make the decision. So I think we would agree that one thing we would not expect to find in such a document would be the recipe, the ingredients, and the instructions on how to make the meal. And that's pretty obvious because you're not there to make the meal. You're there to enjoy the meal. So even though that element may seem related to the others, it serves a totally different function. And I think we agree it does belong on a document, but that document belongs in the kitchen not in the dining room in front of the diners. So just because elements are related does not automatically mean that they belong on a particular document. So I think that's pretty obvious, right? Okay, so we're going to now visit another example. You arrive at a stop sign and you would not expect to find detailed instructions for the stop sign, right? So we have a different type of document it has an octagonal shape, it's red, it's metallic, or polymer, whatever, but its, its purpose is to quickly, instantaneously convey a piece of information, and that is to stop. Now, if we now add other elements to that, we are causing each driver to stop and read the instructions, and of course, that's going to delay that driver as well as create a traffic jam. But believe it or not, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And that's the problem with people evaluating documents and document systems. They're only looking at the document. They're only focused on what the document contains. What they're, what's missing, what's below the iceberg, below the water level, is the process that it takes to create that document. And that's the part that most people miss. They look at the document, they ignore that that document is also the product of a process. And in the case of stop signs, that process has to do with the city's Department of Traffic and Transportation who now has to maintain the locations and the versions because I'm assuming now that each one of these has a unique set of instructions. So now we have the added responsibility of making sure the right sign is in the right place at the right time. And of course, the bureaucracy is already bad enough. And I say this having worked in a summer job back in my college days at the Metro Dade County Department of Traffic and Transportation in, in Miami. So believe me, it's already bureaucratic enough. You give them this and that's it. You might as well shut down the, the traffic department. Um, so, so this is an example of just looking at the sign or the document is just one piece of the equation. The other thing is looking at the process that had to create that document. Another thing is, you're driving a car, right? You have a car, you own a car. That car came with an owner's manual. Now, the, here we have a third type of document, which is the form of a book. That document has a purpose. Now, it has many chapters, many elements, but they're all aligned with the purpose of helping you to understand how to operate the car and maybe do some minor maintenance to make sure you keep it in operating condition. One thing you would not expect to find is a map of New Hampshire. Now, when that car was being built and shipped and distributed, first of all, they had no idea that it would end up in New Hampshire. It could have ended up in Nevada. Secondly, they don't know where you're going to be driving the car. 
So to presume that New Hampshire is where you're going to be driving the car is, is really very strange. Now, if you think that's bad, imagine the process of creating owner's manuals with the specific map of, of where the car will be used. It's also useless because you may drive outside of New Hampshire. So I think we can agree that these are two different documents with two very different purposes. The one on the left has to do with the product. The other one has to do with where the product is used. Product is of one is of what, the other is of where. Now, another aspect of where is where the product is manufactured, and, and that has to do with the process. So there are, there are other relations to geographical locations, where it is used and also where it is made. But there are some very good reasons why you want to keep the what different from the where, because they have different implications.